Hello and welcome to our Mass at St. Mary Parish in Buffalo Grove. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension of our Lord. We pray together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. spirit. As we do come together, celebrating the, uh, the Ascension, part of the Paschal Mystery of Christ, we gather within our hearts all of God's love, we gather within our hearts all the things that we ask the Lord's forgiveness for. We turn to the Lord and ask his mercy. Lord Jesus, you were raised from the dead to bring salvation to your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you ascended into heaven and now sit at the right hand of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are with us always and will come again in glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May God forgive us of all of our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. that we who believe that your only begotten Son, our Redeemer, ascended this day to the heavens. May we in spirit dwell already in the heavenly realms, who lives and reigns with you in the whole unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them during the forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they
they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, through throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking in the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, 
authority, power and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Ascension of the Lord. The Gospel that we had just heard from Matthew's Gospel is in this passage. Actually, Matthew gives little or no information about the actual Ascension. It is the end of Matthew's Gospel, but what we hear is Jesus commissions his disciples to go to preach all, all to all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He tells them he will always be with them, and that's the end of that gospel. It's in the first reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, which we believe is written by St. Luke. In that reading, we hear more about the account of the ascension itself. If you recall, within that passage, though, the disciples show that they still don't quite fully understand the mission of, of Jesus. This is after the resurrection. He is just about to ascend. Yet even after his death and resurrection, his continual teaching with them, his continual presence with them, they still may not fully understand what the mission of Christ has been is. It's evident when they, they ask the question, Master, at this time, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? They're still thinking in terms of an earthly kingdom, a kingdom with an earthly king and a court and things like that. Jesus responds to them, it's not for you to know the, the times and seasons of the Father. He goes on to respond, saying, You will receive power from the Holy Spirit to witness to, to me. Then he leaves them. He doesn't, didn't necessarily directly answer their question, 
did he? Because they still are somewhat confused about the mission. But as they, they stood there, they watched him ascend. They were watching the sky. Two angels, or as the Acts of the Apostles write, that two men dressed in white appeared and standing next to the disciples said, why are you standing looking at the sky? It's probably not unusual behavior if you think about it. Jesus was ascending, that's what we would all do, this, this odd phenomenon that they're watching, Jesus ascending. They're not sure about what's going on, they're confused about what's going on. To just stare at the sky, to just stare off into space, is a common thing that we do in times of stress, times of loss, times of confusion. Maybe in these recent weeks, during this quarantine time and during this time of, of, of the COVID virus, maybe many of us, I know I've caught myself just staring off into space, not knowing what's coming next. When we're not sure, that's one of the things that we do. What is next? For the disciples, what's next is the descent of the Holy Spirit, though they do not quite yet know it. Jesus has said they will, he will send the Holy Spirit, yet they don't quite sure know what that means. And at that time when the Spirit comes, they will fully understand his mission. But for now, they don't completely understand. For now, Jesus needs to ascend to the Father. He needs to leave, actually. The Paschal Mystery is, is confusing at times. The Paschal Mystery, what is the Paschal Mystery when we say that phrase? It is the suffering and the death and the resurrection and the ascension and the sending of the Holy Spirit, the descent of the Holy Spirit. The Paschal Mystery has all those parts to it. It's, it's not just the part on Holy Week of the death and resurrection, but it's also the ascension and the descent of the Spirit. The Paschal Mystery is a confusing thing. But what do we learn from it as we watch Jesus? What do we encounter in the, in the Paschal Mystery as we watch Jesus and as we go through it ourselves? We learn that one must die for the promised rising to happen. One must die for the promised rising to happen. Jesus had to die in order to rise. One must leave in order for the promised spirit to come, to, to, to descend. One must leave. Jesus had to leave. He had to ascend to the Father and leave the physical presence of the disciples in order for the spirit to descend. Jesus wanted to be with his disciples, surely, but he also wanted to be with his disciples for all time, and he wanted to be with us for all time, in all places. And for this, he must leave physically and send his Holy Spirit to be with us within our hearts. The only way this can happen is for him to leave, but in his leaving, that is the only way that he can be more intimately present within all of us. Think of as we celebrate the sacraments in the presence of Christ. It's possible because Jesus is not physically in one place or another, but because he is with us in spirit in all places and at all times. You know, I think of my parents passing, actually, and I know this is a rough comparison, but Losing them was a terrible experience. I missed them and I wanted to, to hang on to them. I felt their, their loss for a couple of years, and I still do. You know how that goes. Yet at the same time, as time has gone on, their absence has actually turned into a warm presence. The heaviness of their passing has turned into 
gratitude. The old way of relating with them in our, our give and take when we were physically present to each other, the old ways of relating has given way to a presence within my heart, a presence in which, although they are not physically here, I know that they are always with me. Probably they are guiding and influencing me more now than when they were alive. Because I know that they are still with me, guiding me, whispering things into my ear, into my heart. And I know their presence is ever there, as opposed to thinking they are physically present elsewhere. Yet I had to go through that loss to come to this point. Jesus had to leave in order to become more fully present to his disciples, but also to all of, all of us. This is part of the Paschal mystery that we celebrate, that sometimes we live in mystery, but God sends his Holy Spirit to guide us. We probably don't like staring at the sky and living in mystery. We do so oftentimes when we know that maybe our lives may be changing directions or a relationship that we're in may be changing directions. The world in which we live goes through tumultuous times. The, the virus that we're enduring now, sometimes other cultural shifts uh, that, we, that we go through in life on earth, you might say, it leaves us sometimes living in mystery. But we trust that Jesus is always with us and that he sends his Holy Spirit to guide us. Yes, Jesus ascended to the Father, but he ascended not to leave us, but to be with us. He didn't leave in order to be away. He left in order to be present. It's part of the mystery. He left so that he could be with us, so that we can be his risen body together, sharing his good news in all that we say and all that we do. One thing about the Ascension is we do proclaim it. It's part of the mystery of our faith. We do proclaim it within our creed. And so I invite us all to pray the Nicene Creed together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I know today we have many prayers within our hearts, prayers and petitions we have for ourselves, for our friends and families, for those who go through this time of this virus. Deacon Jean will now lead us in our prayers and our petitions. Our Easter response to the petition is, <clears throat> Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Remain with us, O Lord so that your church may be strengthened to respond faithfully to Jesus' commission to continue his baptizing and teaching ministry to the ends of the world. We pray. Remain with us, O Lord, so that all nations may be renewed in hope and 
work together in love and peace in order to make decisions for the common good, for the environment, and to promote basic freedoms, we pray. Remain with graduating students everywhere to celebrate their accomplishments and seek to develop their knowledge and skills for the good of all, we pray. Remain with us, O Lord, to recognize the relationship between economic development, concern for the poor, and, re <clears throat> and responsibility for the environment that God entrusts us as stewards to cultivate, till, till, till and protect, we pray. Remain with us, O Lord, so that your light may shine brightly upon all who suffer in darkness because of sickness, unemployment, or homelessness, especially those who are infected or recovering from the coronavirus, as well as those on our parish prayer list and those who care for them, we pray. Remain with our beloved dead so they may come to God's heavenly kingdom of light, love, and peace, especially Catherine Gallagher and Joseph Haney, father of Monica Tolba, as well as those who have died from the corona and all those who gave their lives in the cause of freedom, we pray. With this the Lord, hear our prayer. O God of infinite glory, your Son is exalted in heaven at your right hand as he intercedes for us. Hear the prayers that we make here on earth, so that all may come to know your merciful love and to live in the light of your presence as we await his return in glory. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, let us pray that my sacrifice and yours be found acceptable by God, our Almighty Father. May the, May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good of all God's holy church. We offer sacrifice now and supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as together we acclaim.
you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and again, giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and we who are filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your blessed, blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs, and with all of the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, may it advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Blaise our Bishop, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is truly good. Through him and with him and in him.
Together we join our voices as one parish, as one community, as one body of Christ, praying in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My brothers and sisters, since we are unable to share the Blessed Sacrament in the same manner as we are accustomed, I invite you all to pray together as an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my, in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Lord of love and mercy, you call us, your church at St. Mary, to be an evangelizing people. Inspire us to grow in enthusiasm for the gospel and to share that enthusiasm by becoming a welcoming, forgiving people. May the gospel values that we live transform our families, our neighborhoods, and our country. May we let our faith shine on the world around us radiating the love of Jesus in every way we speak, think, and act. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty, <clears throat> Almighty and ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, in particular announcements, uh, just uh, please do keep your eyes on our, um, in the bulletin and also on uh, uh, our, our flock notes um, email system in terms of our continual efforts to, for a couple of things in particular. One is uh, as the St. Vincent de Paul Food Pantry um, you know, it does continue to operate during this time uh, to assist people with their, their, their needs. And for those who are in need, um, please keep an eye out for that for when they will be receiving uh, food uh, you know, on a drop-off basis. Uh, we've been doing that um, throughout this time. If ever you do want to donate some food towards the pantry, uh, you don't have to wait for those particular drop-off days. You can bring it to the rectory. Um, and we'll, we'll get it over to the pantry as well. Uh, but that food, food uh, uh, helping those who are in need is certainly always appreciated. Please do keep your uh, um, uh, eyes open uh, through, especially through Flat Note and, and on the St. Mary webpage, about how you've heard about how the diocese has uh, given parishes a template, so to speak, a plan uh, to have a phase one of beginning to reopen. Uh, in a very limited way. Uh, the first phase involves being able to celebrate the sacraments of uh, baptism, and reconciliation, um, and to celebrate funerals, um, all in very limited ways uh, with 10 people or less. Um, and uh, it takes an awful lot of training of uh, our volunteers uh, and also uh, preparing the church space to be able to do so. Uh, we are maybe a week away or so from doing from being able to do that. So keep your eyes open If you would like to volunteer also keep your eyes open for that if you would like to volunteer uh, To help we will be needing be needing volunteers uh, to help people during this to, uh, process to welcome people in for baptism or for, to celebrate a wedding as time goes on in the months ahead uh, that's volunteer help will also be essential so uh, please do uh, consider being able to help us out in that kind of way. Um, but keep your eyes peeled uh, for when we will be able to celebrate um, uh, those kinds of things. And despite limited ways, uh, nonetheless, uh, it's a little opening is better than better than nothing. And we will continue to to celebrate mass uh, as long as necessary uh, through uh, video as well. So, the Lord be with you. And and we bow our heads and ask the Lord to send us forth. May Almighty God bless you, for on this very day his only begotten Son pierced the heights of heaven and unlocked for you the way to ascend to where he is. Amen. Amen. May he grant that as Christ after his resurrection was seen plainly by his disciples. So when he comes as judge, he may show himself merciful to you for all eternity. Amen. Amen. And may you who believe he is seated with the Father in his majesty, know with joy the fulfillment of his promise 
to stay with you until the end of time. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thank you.